A challenging aspect of improving teaching practices is the tendency to look for a technology-based silver bullet. But what about vendors who do not desire to be locked into labels such as adaptive learning? How do they define the problem they are trying to solve? And what should educators understand when evaluating or implementing their platforms? At the Realize It Learning Users Conference this past fall, we had the chance to interview company executives to get their perspective on these questions. Even though the company did not intend to be defined by one concept, they have had to deal with the public perceptions. Although we get put into sort of an adaptive learning bucket associated with it, the, uh, to the core, we are really about mastery and measurement. Yeah, so we never set out to be an adaptive learning company. The, the term wasn't even in use when we, when we started off. As I said earlier, we started off with the aim of just making learning better, gathering data, learning about the content, learning about the curriculum, learning about the, the student, and bringing that all together. It happens to result in an adaptive experience, but a lot of the benefit, I think, of the system doesn't necessarily come from the adaptive uh, element. Um, that, that's kind of like a, a bonus almost. In, in, in mostly uh, educational contexts, it is the student that's required to adapt to the educational con context that's been set by that particular institution or that particular teacher. Uh, what we are trying to do is flip that to be able to have the educational context really shaped to the needs of the learner. It's the, the way you have to structure courses, the, the, the process that you have to go through in order to um, you know, get your course into our kind of model with the separation of curriculum and content. I think that helps drive a lot of improvement, may, helps people to um, you know, think a little more deeply about their course and about what it is they're trying to do. Um, and then the data that we gather provides all those insights um, that you can use to interact better with your students and to drive improvements in your course. Given this broader view of faculty enablement that cannot be captured by the adaptive learning label, what do educators need to understand about the platform and the implications of its usage in a course? We have a platform in which institutions can build their courses within us. We don't build courses. So we tried to create a, a kind of a generic platform within which the institution and the instructors can bring those kind of design principles that they want. Key to that, I think, is our separation of curriculum and content. And that's one of the, you know, the very first decisions that we made, that the learning should be um, you know, uh, driven by what the concepts are that the student has to learn, not the content that teaches it. Um, you know, in, when you think of kind of learning through books, it's the content that drives the direction of the learning and the pace of the learning. We wanted to move away from that. When we work with people, invariably we find that that is not such a hard thing for them to grasp to. The thing that they struggle with the most is, how do I make all this happen? When considering a platform that focuses on faculty enablement, educators must look beyond the most obvious success metrics. People have a tendency to think of success and, and things working as being grades, but you kind of have to look beyond that because I think a, a, an adaptive platform and, and our platform can, can bring a lot more to it. You can get a lot more insights. There's a lot more you can learn about your students and learn about your instructors. So how you measure success might not necessarily just be grades. You might say, well, now I know a lot more. Let's just re-engineer the classroom so we can actually tell you what is going on in the classroom. The visibility and the insight is the first value that the institution is going to get. Okay. Something that they never had before. Something that they could never use it in the institutional effectiveness, in the institutional research around whether their assessments are effective, whether their content is effective, whether they truly understand their students, whether they truly understand the pedagogical practices and what's happening with it. That visibility is what is going to help people understand where do I need to focus to be able to get to you know the the, the outcomes that I'm looking for. There is a belief out there that, you know, people are looking for, you know, the, the silver bullet, right? Is, is adaptive the silver bullet with it? And we believe that transformation and change is the silver bullet. You need to go on that and, and finding the right tools and platform that will help you go on that path is, is really important. 
Realize-It Learning is not the only company focusing on enablement of faculty instead of providing silver bullets such as adaptive learning. When evaluating vendors to work with, educators should get to know each company and understand their underlying philosophy and definition of which problems their platform and content are designed to solve.